Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to this new live. So I'm super happy to be with you once again this week and for a topic that is actually uh, quite different from what we've done before because this time we're not going to take a look at Xcode. We're not going to use, I mean, we're going to use Swift, but we're not going to build iOS apps. And instead, we're going to take a look at a website called Coding Game, which from what I understand um, allows us to test our coding skills uh, with like exercises that look kind of like games, like the name uh, suggests. So that's already way too long for an intro. So let's get started. Let me get rid of the cover. So I'm on the website. Uh, just need to make, sorry, need to fix my window. Okay, perfect. So I'm on the website. I created my account and I basically stopped almost there. So we're going to discover it together. I just like clicked on the introduction puzzle to make sure that uh, everything was working before starting the live. So let's get started with the first puzzle. So it seems we have some kind of ID. So coding games lets you improve your coding skills with games. It all starts in the IDE where you will code and test new ideas. Okay, so this is your mission statement. Solo and multiplayer coding games are turn-based. At each turn, your program gets new inputs and must output the action. So this is what made me think that this could be fun is the fact that uh, we are solving problems, but it's not, it's not like, you know, like a red, black screen and that kind of thing. It seems to be a little bit like more fun, at least uh, on the surface. So choose a programming language. So I made sure that indeed there is Swift, so we can use Swift. Okay. And this is where we will have to write the program. Okay. Um, so they just give us the code to use for the first exercise. So I guess we have to write this here, okay? And then check the code. Okay, so the way it, uh, the way it looks, I think here I can, okay, so already in HD, perfect. So basically like we have some Swift code, it's going to parse input from the console and we're going to write to the standard output. And basically coding game is going to input uh, the, the values from the game in the standard input and it's going to read what we write the standard output and is going to update the game accordingly. So here you are, we need to write a program that must destroy the enemy ships by shooting the closest enemy on each turn. And so it seems our program gets few enemies and their distances. And so we need to test. So if distance one is less than distance two, we print the name of enemy one. So basically by doing this, we shoot at enemy one and otherwise we shoot at enemy two. So we are basically doing a minimum between two values. So it's starting very easy. And then it seems we have to test um, our code. So it's going to play the test cases and we can see our code actually happening in real life, in real time on the screen. So that's pretty cool actually, makes it like uh, very fun. And I'm curious to see now what's going to happen after because I had seen this introduction, but I had stopped there. So, okay. Um, yeah. I think we have acquired the skills. Okay. How do we move to the next one? I mean, we've done that one. Okay. Now we can go there. Okay. So let's try and see what it does. It seems like this time it's like multiplayer. So we're going to play against other people. Okay, you have to pass the maximum number of tests as fast as possible. Okay. You are one of the fastest sheriffs in the West. You've taken responsibility for a wagon loaded with gold bullion. Now ruthless bands of desperados are vying to shoot you down and lighten the wagon of its precious, of its precious load. This is the ultimate chance to prove your skills and be the best. Second place is underground. You will face many opponents. Okay, so let's just take a look at the program. So first line and the number of desperados, next end lines name and firing speed in milliseconds and output name of desperados ordered by shooting speed. The fastest is the first. If the speed is under zero, do not include this person in the final list. You cannot kill a legend and constraints. So N is between zero and 10. Okay. So let's take a look at the code. So we have 
basically the function to write our key to standard output, an error stream. That's auto generated code. So this is going to actually, so it's going to get n and then it's going to get the new line. Okay. And then we have to print the answer. So I guess here we should start by um, storing the data into uh, an array, I guess. So let me, let me get started. Okay, so I'm gonna start by doing, okay, so var desperados. So it's going to be an array of uh, string. Should be something like this. Then I'm going to append so desperados, append um, the new value. So like this. And so here I have first a name and then a value like that. So I need to parse it. Okay, mm, do I remember how I parse that kind of values in a Swift? Because the thing is in Swift, I use decodable all the time to parse JSON, but uh, that kind of thing, you don't do it every day when you do iOS apps. So how could I do it? I'm going to know that could be like several um, several spaces. Mm -hmm. If you have an ID, please feel free to suggest it in the chat. It could help me a lot, actually. Um, let me think. First, let's try and see, like, uh, I can print the content of my array and so that I can see, like, uh, what's happening. Let's see. Okay, it seems like Uh, why isn't it working? Cannot find Desperados in scope. I've declared it just here. Um, I feel so stupid when that kind of thing happen. What could be the source of the error? Or maybe, you know what? I'm just going to try something. I'm going to put this right here. So here it's definitely going to happen. Okay. It was that one. Okay. My bad. Okay. So indeed here we have that kind of thing. So I need to split that string uh, into like uh, I'm going to do something that might be a bit like dirty, but it had, it's at the end that I have a number. So what I could do, uh, yeah, I guess I could use a regex to uh, to get the to get the value. Um, I'm trying to remember the APIs because I definitely like don't know them uh, by heart. So let's see. Like let's try it right here. So on this value, let's take a look at what, what's being suggested. Um, how do I open this thing again? Okay. What I can always do is do, is do a split by space. I mean, that could work. It's not going to be... Uh, I don't think we have like for regex, like the support of regex in Swift is going to be improved this year, but it's not that great. So I'm going to do something that is like... Okay. I'm going to do a type alias. Or not, not even that, but I'm going to do here an array, which will be an array of tuples, where there will be a string and an int. And so the int is going to be um, fire speed. And here is going to be the name. And in order to get it, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do like so desperado um, split.
So by space. Going something like this. And then I'm going to do like let fire speed equal int split last. I mean, I'm doing a lot of fast and but uh, they're already doing it. And then for the name, it's going to be like let name is equal. So it's going to be split drop last uh, and then joined with a separator that is going to be a space. And so here I'm going to be able to append. So it's going to be like name name fire speed uh, fire speed okay this way like i will have my array uh, then they said we need to watch out for the one that would have a value that is under zero so we are going to do so we're going to take this we're going to first do a filter and filter is going to be dollar zero dot fire speed greater than or equal zero. And then we're going to do a sort and we are going to sort by, um, whoa, that's a big one right here. Um, can I do like command Z? Yes. I can just write it like this. And so it's going to be dollar zero dot fire speed less than dollar one dot fire speed. Okay. And here I'm just going to print the answer. So I'm going to do like for desperado in desperados print desperado dot name. And so I need to get rid of this right here. Let's see, but it's not looking that bad, I think. Let's try the first one. Okay, cannot choose mutating member on immutable. Oh yes, it's because, so here it's sorted. And actually, um, filter, it does return a new array, right? Yeah, so I need to do something more like this. Okay, the code isn't pretty. But we want it to work. Okay, that one worked. Let's see the other ones. It seems to be working. This is great. No. Oh, because there was found nothing, expected none. Okay, so we have to write none if there is nobody. Okay. So if, so else print none. Let's see now. Okay, and that one. Um, oh, it's because. Okay, yeah, no, I made it like I shouldn't have done it like this. It should have been like um, like gu uh, guard. We're going to do it with a guard. So guard desperados dot is empty equal equal false, else uh, we are going to print none and then return. Okay, let's check again. No. Uh, I cannot write it correctly. Damn it. Okay, let's try again. Uh, return invalid. Okay, so maybe I cannot actually use, can I use a guard? Oh, uh, no, I cannot choose a guard. Okay. So it's going to be like, if it is empty, then we do this. Else, it would be better to write the code the other way around, like uh, take care of the error first and then like have the normal code uh, in the logical place, like in the main part of the function. Uh, but this should work. Okay. Let's play them all.
OK, perfect. It's not the best code I've written, but at least it did the job. OK. And I did second. That's kind of nice, but I would like to get back to just uh, playing. So this challenge, OK. Uh, OK, so let's go to algorithms. I guess this one is going to be easy. Uh, I mean, we've already done that one, I think. Why do they want me to do the same thing twice? We've already done it. Like we paste this, then we do play test case. Yes, we've done it. Okay. Um, can we maybe get another one? <laughs> Not always do the same one. Oh, right. Um, let's do that one. So, destroy the mountains before your starship collides with one of them. For that, shoot the highest mountain on your path. For the start of each game turn, you're given the height of the eight mountains from left to right. By the end of the game turn, you must fire on the highest mountain by outputting its index from 0 to 7. Okay. Okay, okay. So here we get the mountain, the height of one mountain. I need to write a function, an action using print. And so we need to say which one is the highest. Okay, so let's do something like this. So we're going to do something like... Uh, highest okay so uh no let's do it let's do something like this is like a bit more like structured so let's declare an array of like mountain height so it's going to be an array of int okay then so on every new line, on every yeah, on every line that is read, I'm going to do mountain heights append. Uh, no, I just want to append one element. Okay. And then, so if I want to find the index of the max, let's see, I can do mountain height dot max something uh, yes so there is a max so i can do like let max height okay and then i'm going to print so mountain height index uh, do you have something like first index of first index of yes and just force and wrap it okay just going to i want to remove that line let's see how it goes does it build Error value of optional type int must be unwrapped. Um, so line 30. Okay. This one also, yeah, because like the, the array could be empty. Let's see. Okay, good one. Okay. It seems like we're doing pretty good. Okay, we got it. Let's see what we could do. Let's try. Oh, okay, that it's because it shows us what we have completed and I clicked on it like an idiot. Um, let's see if we can do something a bit more like challenging. 
rock, paper, scissor, lizard, spock. That could be fun. So, an international rock, paper, scissors, lizard, spock tournament is organized. All players receive a number when they register. Each player chooses a sign that he will keep throughout the tournament among rock, paper, scissors, lizard, spock. Okay, so scissors cut papers, paper covers rock, rock crushes lizard, lizard poison spock, spock smashes scissors, scissors, okay, there is a lot of them. Uh, I guess we will have to implement all of them. And the winner, so here they all choose and then they meet, okay. So line one, an integer n representing the number of participants in the competition. Line two, two n plus one, an integer num player indicating the player number. Player have distinct numbers between 1 and n, followed by a letter indicating the chosen sign, uh, sign player. Output line 1, the number of the winner, line 2, the list of its opponents separated by spaces. And n is 2 to the power of n values and is between 2 and 1024. Okay. Let's see how I can manage that one. So we have n here. So for e, for i in 0 to n minus 1. So it's going to read the lines. Okay, so we have the input, the new player, and the sign player. Okay, let's go. So. I think I'm going to do like I did last time. So I'm going to start by declaring an array. So it's going to be like my players. It's going to be an array of. So first we're going to have the name, which is a string. And then we're going to have the sign. And the sign. Um, so the sign, the way it's going to work is that I'm going to create an enum for that one. Seems like the right choice. I'm going to create my enum just right here. So we're going to have an enum with uh, four cases. So case, actually, I'm just going to like uh, copy and paste. Could do something like that. So it will be like sign and it's going to be back backed by a string. So this one is like that. Case paper. This one was a C. So case scissors. Case lizard. Okay. Case spoke. Okay, so here I can set I have a sign. I just want to copy this thing. All right. Um, so then I'm going to take my array of players. I'm going to append a new one, which is going to first have a name. So the name is easy. Oh, it's not a name actually. It's a num. Okay. So it's num player. And for the second one, so for the sign, here is going to be this. I'm gonna give it a row value, which is going to be sign player. And I'm gonna have to force and wrap it. Okay, and this way I should have my array. I'm looking like, can I debug the code? No, I cannot put like a breakpoint. All right. So now what I want, I want to have here a method that will be like uh, wins against other sign. So something like this. And then I'm going to want to switch over self and that other sign. And here 
that's where I'm going to want to implement all the rules. So how many are there? Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 of them. So let's go. Oh, but there could be also a draw. So I need to think about it. Uh, so how do I implement this part? Because I was about to do something like this, but actually, actually I need an other enum, which is going to be like a match result. And it's going to be like case win, case tie, case lose and it's going to be a match result actually um so the way i'm going to do it so i'm going to say like if we have so scissors cut papers so if we have scissors against paper it's gonna be return win because scissors, okay, and we know that like lose is if it's win in one, if like A wins over B, then B loses over A. So it can solve by two, it can like divide by two um, the cases we have to take care of. So we have this first case, then so it's like paper over rock. So it's also a win. I'm going to do like a copy and paste so I can like save time. Then it's rock crushes lizard. Or rather, like maybe I should just do it uh, like this, you know, like, uh, yeah, and just at the end. But I'm not sure whether this actually builds or not. I think it should. Something like this. So then we have so rock lizard lizard spock spock scissors okay scissors decapitate lizard uh, lizard, it's paper, paper, this proves Spock, Spock vaporizes rock, and rock crushes scissors, okay. So that's the first case where we have a win. Then I need to write the other case. So it's like, if we have like scissors, so it's for the ties. So actually I'm going to do, I try to be smart and to do copy paste. So I need how many of them? Uh, so I have one, two, three, four, five. So two, three, four, five. And then, I didn't, wait, what? It's so small, I didn't mean to do that. How do I fix this? Okay, I broke everything. Um, I'm going to leave it like this, but I almost can't see anything now. Okay, so Spock. I don't want to do that. So in that case, it's going to be return tie. Um, what a self. I could have done like, uh, I could have done this actually. Like I, I think I want like a, 
I think you're right. I think I could have done like uh, if uh, the two are equal like um, to begin with. That would have been maybe better. Damn it, I cannot see anything. That's so annoying. Okay, and then it's gonna be default return uh, lose. I need the return keyword. Okay. So I have my function, so I have my players and I just cannot see anything. Oh, wait. No, how did I do that? Okay, maybe I won't get anything better than this, but... Uh... Damn it. Okay, so I have my players and now how do I get uh, who's the winner? I guess I need to like make them play uh, amongst themselves just to find the, the winner. So like the winner, it would be like um, so I'm gonna do like after my for loop I'm gonna do like var so var tournament equal players and then I'm gonna do like while tournament dot count is not equal to one so uh, up until I have like um, up until uh, I have uh, my winner. So for each round, I'm gonna do four. And I, I would like to like uh, group them uh, two by two. So let's see if there is a method for that. To do something like group, no, or like, uh, split. Yeah, no, not like this. Enumerated, no. Uh, let me think. So we have our tournament. Until there isn't a winner on my tournament, I won't. I mean, I'm going to do it like uh, for E in um, I know there is something to do like a stride over uh, it's so freaking small. Oh, wait. I just can't understand how I can make it bigger again. No, that's too much. Maybe like this. Okay, at least that's a bit better. Now I can see what I'm doing. Um, so it's going to be something like zero uh, tournament count. So something like this, and I think there is something like stride. Uh, how do you do that? Maybe it could be zero dot. But there is something to do it. I just don't remember what the syntax is. Or maybe it should be like something like this. So. Tournament dot count minus one. So I have this thing here. Like I think I'm going to ask Google for this. So if I do Swift stride, okay. So it's like this. It's stride. Okay. So it's a global function. Okay. So it's going to be like tried okay 
and there is two functions so there is from through and from to and the difference is that okay so here it's two so it's tried from zero to tournament count by two so it should do like zero uh two four etc and so if i do it like this i could do like let player one is um tournament of i let player two hold tournament of uh, i plus one okay so then i need to make them play against each other so i'm going to do like player one dot sign dot um wins against player two dot sign all right actually i'm not even sure like whether or not this code builds i'm just going to try and make it build to see if there is a mistake so 51 so here i forgot to do something like this okay 5924 so oh yes because here it's actually num and i didn't update it okay what's the next mistake yeah and it timed out because here it's never going to end at least this code builds and we can get back to it okay here is going to be like let result and then i'm going to have yeah i guess here i'm going to have losers is going to be an array of int that i will create every time okay so here i have my result and so i'm going to switch over that result and so case it's a win so player one won against player two. So player two is the loser. So I'm going to do losers dot append um, player two. Case it's a lose. So player one has lost. It's the same thing, but the other way around. So also pretty straightforward. And the last one we're going to think a little bit more is when it's a tie, because they said in the rules. When there is a tie, the player with the lowest number wins. So I just need to do. So in that case, I'm going to do losers dot append, and it's going to be like player one dot num less than. Or like no, they said like I can do it with a min. I think it's going to be even easier. So they said. The player with the lowest number wins, so the one with the highest number loses, and so it's going to be the max between player one dot num and player two dot num. Okay. And then at the end of the round, I have my losers, and so I'm going to do for loser in losers um, i'm gonna do tournament dot remove um, or can i do maybe like subtract no it's uh it's only on sets that you can do it i mean i'm gonna do remove no problem so remove where and the closure is going to be uh, zero dot num. No, the other way around. Um, it's going to be like losers, 
contains, if it could suggest it would be great. Yeah, actually, I don't, I don't need this for loop. It's just like uh, not needed. I just need to tournament remove all where loser dot contains dollar zero dot num something like this. Okay, so this should give me like uh, my tournament loser is recreated. Oh, that's why. Okay, that's the reason why it wouldn't. I'm not even sure whether in English you put one or two O's for losers. <laughs> okay, so I have this, I have this, I have my tournament. Okay, um, let me see. Now I just need to print out two things. So first the winner and then all the other ones. So in the end, so the winner is going to be so the only one left inside my tournament. So tournament is here. I'm going to put the code right here and maybe I will move it afterward. So it's going to be tournament dot first dot num. Okay. And then I need all of the others. So for that I'm gonna do print. Uh, so it's gonna be tournament. Uh, remove oh no it's not the tournament it's the players this time so it's going to be players it's going to be more like filter so filter where dollar uh, zero dot num is not equal to the winner. Actually, maybe I move something like this, like winner. So like this. So here is going to be winner dot num. Okay, so is not equal to winner dot num. Okay, and then I need to do a join. Uh, wait. First, I need to close up. Okay, so like this. Then I'm going to have to map to do dollar zero dot num. And then I need to do join uh, by white space. I don't know, is this going to work? Let's see. I'm sure I have some like, uh, yeah, I have some build errors that was for sure. So line 73, cannot convert value of type. Oh, okay. It's because every time I need to do like, uh, yeah, dot num every time, okay. Cannot convert value of type int to closure result of type string. Okay, then let's do <laughs> something like this. Is it better? Um, okay, so it's separator. Do I get it wrong this time? Do I get it right? Okay, so <laughs> uh, we have a problem. <laughs> um, oh, wait. So it's the second line that is an issue. There are way too many numbers. And why? Oh, it's the people who played against. Uh, okay, it's the people the winner played against. So it's even more complex than what I thought. So my code actually like uh, doesn't solve the entire problem. They made that sucks. How can I do better? Mm, let's see. I need to basically like store every match, I guess. Yeah, like I need to store every match. Um, okay, I mean, I can always do it. Like inside my tournament. Uh, so I'm going to do it here. So I'm going to have var matches. So it should 
a match is going to be like uh, it could be like oh my god it's going to be so annoying <laughs> because i'm going to have to keep track of all the matches of oh, i thought this would be fun but it is starting to be not fun at all um so let's try and think about it if i keep an array of all the matches that happen then i could do like um, when i have the winner i take all the matches of the winner um, and i guess they must be in order also like so here it's two one two okay it's two. No, it's two so it would be one then five so how is it it's six five one okay so it's in order okay um I need to come up with the right data structure. So I was thinking like um, I'm going to make some type aliases. So first I'm going to have a player and so it's going to be this thing right here. Here I'm going to have a player and then if I want to have let's say a match so a match, it's like you have player one, which is a player, and then you have player two, which is also a player, and the outcome you can always compute it like dynamically, so you don't need to 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 store it. So let's see if I store the matches. So it would be like. Um, it would be here, so I would do like star matches, so it's going to be an array of match. And then I'm gonna append, so this is going to be player one, this is going to be player two, okay. Let's see what I can do after that. Once I have my winner, so this line here is definitely not this. Um, what I want to do is that I want to find all of the matches and find the, the loser actually. So I'm going to do like matches, okay? I'm going to do a filter and the filter is going to be like it's either uh, dot player one dot num equal equal winner dot num so it's either one of the two okay so that's the first filter. Then, um, so you have all the matches played by the winner. Then I need to find uh, who was the loser. So to find that, I'm going to do a map over that match. Actually, I'm going to copy and paste. So except that uh, here I need to add so $0 here and here and so if it's a win i'm going to return player two if it's a lose uh, no like no, no i need to do i'm not smart enough like this is not good so that's the result okay so if player one won against player two then the loser okay so it's indeed okay the code was already like uh, computing the loser and not the winner so that one is good so in that case it's player one uh, okay so actually i'm already going to take the num right at this point it will save me a map after one it will make that max uh, still build all right 
I just need to add a return on every possible outcome. Okay, so now I have this. Now I can do just map so turn them uh, into a string so like this string dot init uh, not just like this then joined uh, with a separator which is going to be this and let so let opponents like this and then I'm gonna try and print the opponents let's see do you think I got it right or do you think I got it wrong? First, does the code build? Okay. Uh, init. Yes, I guess I need to give the name of the init. Uh, it's an init that would take like, uh, you know what? I want it to work. I don't want it to be the best code ever. So I'm just going to do string interpolation and it's going to be perfect. Okay. Unable to infer complex closure type. So this closure, so here is going to be a match. And it's going to go towards int. So here I'm going to have a match here and a match there. Did it help? Uh, contextual closure expects one argument. Uh, where? Oh. Forgot the keyword in. Cannot find player two in scope. Oh, damn it. I also need to prefix. So here, 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 and here. Okay. Uh, so there is a mistake. So, but we're getting closer. Like it, it's found six, seven, eight, and it's expected six, five, one. So no, 67, no, 658 and 651. So the last one is not correct. Um, let's check the code. So if there is a win, we return player two. So if player one won against player two, player two is the loser. If player one loses, then maybe it's the last one that uh, actually I failed because the rule is that if there is a tie, so in the case of a tie, the player with the lowest number wins. So actually, I got that rule wrong because here I said, no wait, the one with the lowest number wins, which means the one with the greatest number loses. So actually, it should be that one. And it's just the last one is not correct. So Q is good, but... Maybe I also like didn't make one of the rules correctly. Let's just see rock rock scissors. Oh, it's here. Okay. So rock paper. I was missing the paper. Okay. Was it the source of the mistake? Yes. We got that one working. <laughs> so proud of myself. <laughs> All right, this is looking pretty good. Is it going to work with? It worked with all of them. Perfect. Okay, I'm still glad. Like, it was not the most the most fun I had, but I'm still glad I managed like to to make it work. I feel like uh, if I had to be a student again, I would be able to get my degree like uh, eight years after I actually like uh, got it. Okay. Let's submit the answer. Uh, don't take example on this code like for like uh, good coding patterns because that code is pretty bad. Let's see what we can do now. Uh, I don't want to do another like uh, algorithms because I think I've had enough algorithms not for the rest of my life but for the rest of my day. Uh, let's go toward uh, AI maybe. Like. Uh, Binary search intervals list. No, I want to go towards AI. I think it's going to be more fun. Let's go. So bot programming. 
Окей. Okay. So your target should be the x-y position of the next checkpoint. Can you fix that code? So here we have code that automatically collects game data in an infinite loop. It uses the standard input to place data into the game variables, such as x and y. You do not need to modify the initialization of the game variables, OK? OK, so let's see. Edit this line to output the target position and thrust between 0 and 100. Okay, and so here we have next checkpoint. Oh, okay, it's because there is a mistake, so let's see. Okay. So we have a boss to beat. So how is this going to work? Okay, so we have to go faster. There's not much of a challenge, it's more like, a, can you let me skip the onboarding? <laughs> <sighs> Let's see. Yes, we put a bigger number and so we won, but uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's not the best way to win. I think I'm going to go back like to the algorithms because uh, that one is not that fun. I'm gonna go back to here. Let's see. Let's try at least another one uh, before we end. So is there something that could be pretty fun? Mm. I mean, list. Binary search. Let's try and do binary search. Let's see if I still remember how it works. So what's the goal? You will look for the hostages on a given building by jumping from one window to another using your grapnel gun. Your goal is to jump to the window where the hostages are located in order to disarm the bombs. Unfortunately, you have a limited number of jumps before the bombs go off. Before each jump, the heat signature device will provide you with the direction of the bombs based on your current position. So we have like one of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possible directions. Your mission is to program the device so that it indicates the location of the next window you should jump to in order to reach the bombs room as soon as possible. Buildings are represented as a rectangular array of windows. The window in the top left corner of the building is at index 00. zero. For some tests, the bomb's location may change from one extreme to the other. The goal is to help you find the best algorithm in all cases. The tests provided are similar to the validation tests used to compute the final score, but remain different. So game input, the program must first read the, initi the initiation data from the standard input, then within an infinite loop, read the device data from the standard input and provide the standard output, the next movement instruction. So line one, two integers, W and H, so the couple represent the width and height of the building as a number of windows. One integer n, which, runs, which represents the number of jumps you can make before the bombs go off. Two integers x0 and y0 representing your starting position. Input for one game turn, the direction indicating where the bomb is. So a single line with two integers x, y, separated by a space character. x, y represents the location of the next window you should jump to. x represents the index along the horizontal axis. Y represents the index along the vertical axis. Zero, zero is located on the top left corner of the building. Okay, so just like uh, just like uh, views in UIKit, for instance. Okay. So 10 by 10, six jumps to find the bombs. Start equation two, five. And so input. Okay, so I guess if they see if it's in the upward right, then like each uh, each direction we get from a device is going to cut 
one of the two directions in half. So this is why they call it binary search, I guess. Okay, let's see if I can manage to do it. So while true, so bomb direction. Okay. Okay. So um, how should we do it? So I guess we should try and cut each possible direction into two. Uh, so So we have this bomb direction and then I guess I'm going to want to switch over it. So let's do it. Let's switch over it. So switch over. Actually, I'm going to do like, just like I was doing uh, before. So I'm going to do an enum, which will be direction. So like this, it's based on a string. And so I'm going to have case up, which is u case upright, which is uh, qr case right which is a uh, case down right which is um dr and while i'm writing all this boilerplate if you have any suggestion like toward the solution please let me know in the chat that's why it been that's why it's there for because any help will be welcome down left so it's going to be like dl case uh, left so l and the last one case up left which will be uh, ul okay I guess I should take like the middle every time. So I guess I should do like something like this, like var, um, you know, like to know like, should I go right or not? Like, uh, no, actually I will do something smarter than this. So how do I know where I am in terms of Okay, so here we start with x and y0, okay. So I have my game loop. I guess before this I want to have like var x equal x0 and var y equal y0 so that I can update them uh, later on. So now I'm going to switch over the bomb direction. Okay. It would be so nice if it could like auto generate all of the cases just like it does in Xcode, you know. But basically the way I see it is that if it is up, what should happen is that I should like half uh, the direction. So it should be like uh, then y equal y. Um, so where I am currently uh, over two, like this. So if I'm at zero, yeah, it should be something like this. So if it's the case up, if it's the case uh, up and right, then it should also, actually I would have been better to use an option set to describe this enum, but uh, I don't know the syntax by heart and I don't, I know I'm going to make too many mistakes, so it's better to just copy and paste the code. So in that case, I want to do that. And if I want to go right, uh, so right, it's not the same thing because right, I'm moving forward. Whereas in a way like up, I was going backwards, but in the vertical direction. 
So it's going to be like x equal, and it's going to be so the current value is going to be like the total. Uh, so the width of the building may be minus one because yeah, it should be like w minus one minus the current x. So like uh, yeah, it should be like that interval and half it. So no, actually it should be this thing plus x. So where I am currently, and then I have it. Uh, I'm sure I'm making a lot of mistakes and I will find them later. But uh, anyway, we need to iterate. So case it's only go right. So it's only that code here. Okay. Um, case it's down right so i still have that code for the x part but since it's down i'm gonna have the same logic so it's going to be like h minus one plus y over two okay uh, case so after done right we have just down and so for that one is gonna be this one right here uh, then it's going to be like case down and left so for this so for down i still need that code but for left it's going to be the same thing here now, except if an x instead of a y, okay. So down left, and then I will have only the case left. So it's just that code over here. And finally, up left. So case up left. And so left is still here, and for up, it was that one. Okay, it's not looking so bad actually. Let's see like if I try and run this code. So then I would need to do like uh, yeah. Okay, it's like this. X and same thing uh, for y. Let's see how it's going to go. Like first, does this code even build? Okay, can I find x0 in scope? Y is just above. Oh, it's because I wrote O and not zero. Okay. Um, substring has no member up. So where? 45. Oh switch uh, switch over direction row value bomb direction and let me force and wrap this okay so we wrote two and six so batman moves from window two six to window two six uh huh. That's not what we wanted to do, I guess. Uh, let's see. I mean, I am indeed updating Y. Failure, you are. Okay, so it keeps doing Q6, 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 Q6. So there is definitely a mistake. I mean, it must be something pretty stupid. Because here I do that, and it's like it should go through. So it's up, up, right, right, down, right, down, down, left, left, up, left, okay. Mm -hmm. And we can do 
print. Okay, so we can also do like a debug like this. So let's see. Why don't we uh, go over this? Because they should be updated here, right? So here it said below and to the right. So it should be saying down right. And what does the code to down right says? It says so y y equal h minus one plus y over two. So here y is q. So y is q. What it's doing is doing like so y is q and h is first. So it's doing q uh, plus four minus one. Okay, so it doesn't change it at all. So maybe actually, actually maybe like it's my minus one that are the source of the mistake. Let's see. Okay, that seems to work better. Uh, let's try them all and see if I got them on the almost first try. Okay, so here it doesn't seem to be working. Um, it seems to go between 20 and 40. Okay. Let's try, let's try to understand why it could not work. It seems it was iterating between up and down. So up, it divides by two and down, it adds H and it divides by two. So it's like it was going between like, uh, it was doing like 20, 40, 20, 40. And I guess if I look at the number, so it was doing 20, 40, and how many, like how many windows? Okay, I don't have the number of windows, but anyway, like it's, it's failing to, um, it's failing to like uh, narrow it down to the correct number. So what could I do for this? So when it's up, I half it. And when it's down, so actually indeed, like they, they could be, I might be missing something because like when it's Y, so if it's at Y and if it's up, so like if it's 40, I say it's 20, okay? But the thing is, if then it says down, yeah, it's because, okay, because like I haven't really like narrowed it down because uh, it's still like uh, it's still going to places where it went like previously. So I guess like the way I modeled the thing isn't uh, great. And why was there an exclamation point here? Uh, can I read it? Okay. Okay, I don't know why there was the exclamation point, but I guess like the way I'm modeling the, the problem isn't the right one. So uh, maybe, maybe I should actually do like, uh, like um, should I like try and write a tree or not? Um, or is there a way like in the computation where I could force it to like, um, don't get stuck into that loop. Because here, let's see. So when I do H plus Y, so if it's already at the bottom, I do add the current, it could, it could, do, it could stay to the same.
And so here, for instance, when I do y, so if I am on on the index one and the bomb is on index zero, it's going to tell me go up. So I'm going to do one divided by two, and it's going to give me uh, zero. So that would be good. If I am on four and the bomb is on two, I'm going to work also. If I am on four but the bomb is on three, I will go so up. So from four to two, uh, but then it will tell me to go down. And so for down, I will like add. Yeah, actually it shouldn't be, I guess here I'm using H and Y, but uh, it's like, I shouldn't go like, actually it should be uh, the, the mean I have reached uh, like, uh, no, not really the mean I have reached, but I should be like, yeah, like find a way to keep track of all the places that are actually like uh, off limit. Uh, could I do it by keeping a track, by keeping track of the max value of like, uh, yeah, like the mean and max that could actually work. Like I could keep track of the mean and max of X and say like uh, you never go like uh, below or above them. Um, maybe this could work. Um, let's see how I could do it. I could keep track of mean X, max X, mean Y, max Y, and then clamp the value uh, to those. But if I do it, it's going to solve my issue because I could still go between 20 and 40, like uh, uh, quite a lot actually. And still, like, if it goes, like, to... Um, yeah, it's, it's like, if I have... If I am on X and it says go left, I should never go past... Uh, I should never go past uh, X, uh, X again. So... I think I don't have the right way to model the problem. How can I improve? I don't want to finish like a, I don't want to finish on a problem that I cannot solve. So Or maybe I could like build like a yeah, but if I build a tree with all of the possible coordinates, uh, how do I build that tree? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to try like the other ones to see. Uh, so here it's a tower and it doesn't work. This one also doesn't work. This one doesn't work, and this one. Yeah, it also doesn't work. Okay, so how do we implement a better binary search? And actually here, what it does is that so you jump to window. Okay, you start at two and five. And it says upright and you jump to five and four. So why five and four? So you start in Q5 and then it stays, okay, it jumps to 5 and 4. And why did it do that? It's like it went by Q, I guess. So it says upright, so it says, okay, I was in Q, so I go by Q. 
and I was in five, so I go minus one. Okay, but like uh, it's not uh, not the most efficient. I think it might be linked to like my my plus one and minus one. Uh, because here the width is 10 and I have added like the fact that you divide by 2 yeah because like if I put my minus 1s back No, like this. Actually, it doesn't even help. And this one is going to go back to failing again. Uh, why does it fail? Yeah, because it's not moving. <gasps> okay, what? <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> seems like, oh, okay, so when I do command and then I slide, okay, I finally got it. Um, just thinking if there could be a smarter way to half the problem even more. Maybe if I should keep track like of all of the, I don't know if I keep a track of all the, the jumps I made before. I don't know why, but I want to make sure that I don't have like an uh, off by one bug, you know, that kind of thing. I think if I do this, I'm going to do like uh, go out of bounds and it's going to uh, completely. Oh, wait. It actually worked. I mean, if that's just like one of these like out of bounds things. Okay, now it's still like, uh, it's still going like crazy because it says up, down, and it cannot like narrow it down. So no, damn it, I had a false hope. Uh, so I need to find a better way to keep track of the interval. Um, Because when it goes like up and down like this, so when it goes up, actually, yeah, it should go half between the previous and uh, and the current one. But it shouldn't like. Uh, because when it goes up tries to go like halfway and when it goes down it tries to go halfway down but uh, it's not keeping track of um, of all the plays that we know are off limits so what could be a better way to model the data I cannot just for now I'm just keeping like x and y but that's not enough I need to also have like my previous coordinates and I guess I should use them. How could it work? Because if I only have the previous X and the previous Y. I mean, it could maybe work. Mm. 
like prep x it's going to start with x and then var previous y it's also going to start with y and then how do i use them in the computation like when you go up so you want to go up but you don't want to go past the the previous y so actually it shouldn't be y over 2 it should be uh, y like y minus the previous y over 2 yeah it should be computed like differences so it should be like plus equal but the thing is i'm just thinking like for the first turn i think like for the first time i don't have a choice and i need to do like this um, or maybe it's like maybe a zero would work as default values let's see because here so instead of just having the value it would be plus equal and that plus equal would be so y so it would be like y minus the previous y over 2 and the thing is if i do this uh, when do i update previous x and previous y because i cannot do it here but here i'm already going to change the values so uh, i think this could work i just need to find how i store those values so previous x and previous y i'm going to update all the computation first so like here is going to be the same thing so here same thing here so when i have this one and here is when i have this one x minus previous x over 2 There is one here. Okay, it's here the other one. And for the last one, so here I want to. So let's say I am in Q and it goes all the way up to 10 and I, it says down. So I want to do like uh, to go down, but not past uh, a previous Y. But if the previous Y was. Oh, no, it's not working because I. If the previous y was in the opposite direction, it's it's not going to keep track of it efficiently. Hmm. Starting to get stuck on that one. Oh fuck, I think I'm Actually, I'm thinking of the problem like the, the wrong way. The way I should be thinking about it is that basically like the, the, the square where I'm looking at is getting smaller and smaller. And so I should try to model how that square is getting smaller and smaller. Um, so what am I doing? I'm trying to solve a problem on coding game. Um, it's basically binary search. So like, I need to find the, the current like uh, rect. I think that's it. I think that's it. So I should do it like that. So how do you model uh, a rectangle? You need like four things. So let's do something like this. So struct rect is going to be like um, bar x which is an int, var y, which is an int, var uh, going to be like origin x, origin y, 
um, width, also an int, and finally, um, yeah, I'm gonna do that, and then I will go to the middle, and I think this should work. Let's hope, because I wanna get to sleep, and I want to get to sleep on a victory. So, let's try and do it. So we have this right, okay. This is, this is what I'm going to create, it's going to be like my search area, we could say. So it's going to be a rect, and for the values, so it will be here, zero, zero also. Um, the width is going to be W, and the H is going to be, and the height is going to be H, okay. And here, I should update the search area uh, accordingly. It's like, um, yeah, like, so for instance, if it says you need to go up, I should update my search area and it should be updated so that, so if I need to go up, it should be like the, yeah, and then I will take the middle of the search area each time. So search area dot, So let's see, uh, should the width change or the height change? Uh, it really depends. Uh, how do I update the search area? So is it gonna be like, uh, if it says go up, so I have a current Y, so it would be that um, the width, now actually it should be like, uh, Maybe I should do like top left and bottom right. Maybe it will be better if I do something like uh, top left X, top left Y, yeah, uh, bottom right X, bottom right Y. So actually it's this one will still be zero, this one will still be y, and this one will be width uh, minus one. And this one uh, will be h minus one. Okay. And so if it says go up, it means that there is nothing below. So the search area, um, like it's bottom right eight, or it's bottom right y, uh, should become like even y uh, minus one. Because like, uh, yeah, if I am on one, it says go up, okay. So that should be like this, so not like that, okay. So here, if it says upright, so I should do something like that. Uh, so for the right part, how do I model the fact that I need to go right? So it would be like, yeah, it will be like the top left x that will be equal this time x uh, plus one, okay? I have a good feeling about this one. I hope I'm not going to regret it later on, but I have a good feeling. So for the down part, so if it is down, then it will be search area dot uh, top left y that will be y plus one. Okay, so down part is also here and here. For the left part, so if I need to go left inside in terms of my search, wait, what? Okay, so if I need to go left for my search area, it means that the top, the bottom right x will be equal to x minus one. So once again, I update this case right here. And for up, I already have the code right here. So I can do it like this. And then I need to update x and y. And so x is going to be search area uh, Top left f, top left x plus search area 
bottom right X and I'm gonna go over two. Okay. It's gonna be the same thing for Y. So Y is going to be like this. Okay. I got a good feeling about this. I hope I'm not going to be disappointed. <laughs> let's see. The first one worked. Okay, let's play them all and let's just uh, pray. Pray a lot. Pray for me, please. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. It seems to have worked. Is it? It worked. It fucking worked. Okay. Is it going to find it? It managed to find it. I solved the problem. <sighs> I'm so glad because I was like, this is probably going to be the last I do. And I didn't want to go to bed uh, like with the feeling that I had failed to solve the problem. So it was indeed a binary search and the strategy was uh, to narrow down the search space. And then, so with this code, uh, let me show the code. With this code right here, we are narrowing down the search space which ensures that we never like um, go back on our track. We always make progress. And the important part is that here we divide by two, which means that we also cut the search space by at least two on one of the dimension by uh, the next turn, which is going to give us a property that probably um, like uh, if, the, if the dimension of the problem is uh, n, uh, we're going to be able to solve it in log n uh, time. And I'm not sure how, how you adapt it to say that it is in two dimension, but uh, the idea is that uh, it gives you a logarithmic solution to the problem. Okay. And you were saying, so Ned, just make the right defined by two 2D points on the diagonal line. Perfect. I, I forgot to watch the chat, but it's exactly what I've done. And uh, you're absolutely right. I think it simplified the, the computations uh, by a lot. Okay, super glad I finally found the solution. So coding game, uh, it's interesting. Uh, I think when you're doing iOS apps, it's not the most uh, useful thing like to train you, like you're better off like taking a look at hacking with Swift, for instance. Uh, but it is still like interesting. And uh, actually the reason why I wanted to try it is because um, like one or two years ago, I uh, reviewed coding games for work, which is basically like for like technical assessments of uh, candidates. And I found the tool was pretty nice. Like the problem they were giving, uh, they were like, uh, I thought that they made sense. You know, they were not neither, neither like too easy or too hard. So you had a good feeling about it. So kind of glad that uh, I've tried it, managed to solve a few, uh, a few problems. So I hope you've also enjoyed watching this live. If you're watching it like now or during the replay and you have any feedback, you can see it like uh, in the comments. Uh, thanks a lot for watching and uh, see you another time for another video, another live. Bye-bye.